Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and today I need to do a bit more modding for the Landcool 2 mesh mod. But I'm not actually going to be working on the Landcool case. No, today and tomorrow and possibly the next day, but only mere minutes for the audience at home, I need to mod some of the components and fabricate some parts that are going into the case. So let me walk you through what I'll be doing. First, I need to fabricate a second M.2 shield exactly like the one that comes on the motherboard to cover the second M.2 slot. I need to also fabricate another small piece that'll cover the bottom rear section of the motherboard right here. I need to paint, skin, and decal the 2.5 inch SSD, and this isn't even the SSD for the build. That should arrive tomorrow, hence I'll be shooting this at least over the next two days. And finally, the big project. I'm going to mod the RTX 2080 Ti for the build. This includes fabricating a new brushed aluminum backplate that'll match the panels I fabbed for the case, uh, painting and decaling the shroud and fans, and then it's time to repaste and repad this card anyway, so I'll do that. And that's the plan. Now it's time to execute it. I'm ready. You ready? Let's go. I take it back. I'm not ready because I forgot one mod. The memory. See, this Trident Z Neo is black and silver. Almost fits the build, but not quite. So I'm going to strip it down and change it from black and silver to silver and white. But I'm out of sodium hydroxide, so stripping the anodizing may prove, well, more difficult than if I had some lying around. Get it? It was a chemistry joke. You get it. I'm gonna go now. The first piece to fabricate was the M.2 heat spreader. So I got to work cutting a piece of one inch aluminum bar to size, but it only took seconds to realize my last hacksaw blade was dull as a butter knife. So on to plan B and out came the Dremel. The Dremel worked well, but man that aluminum gets hot and of course it took a lot more filing to get those edges smooth and even. Then, using the Dremel again, I beveled the bottom edge of the part. Once the piece was shaped, I finished it exactly like I did the panels I fabricated for the Land Cool 2 mesh, starting with 400 grit and working up to 3000, and then giving it that brush texture with a 320 grit. Finally, I drilled out the mounting holes. The next task was the GPU, so I started by completely disassembling it. Then I prepped the parts to be painted by removing decals, sanding them down with 400 grit sandpaper, cleaning them up with isopropyl alcohol and masking off the areas I don't want painted. I then painted the plastic shroud a bright white and the shroud inserts a metallic silver. Each part got two coats of color and three light coats of clear. Next, I traced the backplate shape out on a 22 gauge sheet of aluminum, cut it out with tin snips and filed the edges smooth. I then sanded and gave it a brush texture the same way I did before, and using the original backplate as a guide, I drilled out all the screw holes. 
I finished it off by masking off and painting some detail pinstripes. With the arrival of the SSD, I got to work, but before I do any modifications to a component, I make sure it's working. So I loaded the new SSD into my external drive sled and initialized, formatted, and scanned it. Happy that it was fully functional, I got to work peeling the sticker with the help of some heat, masking off the connectors, and applying two coats of bright white and a few light coats of clear. Next task is the memory, so using my heat gun to loosen up the thermal adhesive, I removed the heat spreaders and cleaned them in preparation to strip the black anodizing. So, I just wanted to take a few minutes to show y'all how to strip anodizing from aluminum parts like these memory heat spreaders. And to do that, I did end up running down to Lowe's and picking up a bottle of lye in the form of this drain opener, which is 100% sodium hydroxide. There are several different ways to strip anodizing. There are even products dedicated to doing it, but I've always found the way I'm going to show you here to work just about every time. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure the parts you're stripping are completely clean. So these heat spreaders spent the better part of the day soaking in a simple green solution and rinse clean. Next, I need to mix my sodium hydroxide solution and I have a plastic container. Tar that out. Now, you only want to do this in plastic or glass, definitely not metal. And I already measured 16 ounces of room temperature distilled water in here. Now, I use a 5% NaOH solution, and to do that, I'll add about 25 grams of this lye to the water. The ratio is 12.5 grams sodium hydroxide for every 8 ounces of water, or 50 grams per quart to get a 5% solution. So, I have my container and my little scale. Alright, now I want to dissolve this into my water again using plastic to stir. You also notice that I'm wearing gloves and goggles because this stuff is super caustic. Okay, let's soak these heat spreaders. And you should almost immediately see it starting to bubble and you see the water turning black. So that anodizing is already starting to strip. Now at this concentration, it should only take a couple minutes to strip the anodized layer and you don't want to keep it in there much longer than that because it'll start to pit the aluminum itself. Okay, now I'm just going to rinse them off. This is just a bucket full of clean deionized water to rinse off all that lye solution. And there is the finished result. Not too shabby. The Trident Z logo even remained because it was silk screened over the anodizing so the lye couldn't strip it off. I could always take it off with some quick strip, but I actually think it looks pretty good. Now, the final thing I'll do to these is tape off the now bare aluminum half and paint the textured side white. And here's how that'll look. This memory will now match my build perfectly. Okay, now all that's left to do is put everything back together, then I'll be back to show you the final results of all the mods. Before assembling everything, I jumped on Photoshop and made some custom decals for the graphics card and SSD.
Now, reassembly time. All right, the mods and fabrications are done. Everything is back together. Let's check it out. And I'll start with the motherboard. Because as I was going through some of the daily footage, I realized I forgot to film the fabrication of this little piece. So as a recap, I cut a shape to fit out a piece of some two millimeter acrylic, sanded, primed, painted, and stenciled. And this piece is gonna be mounted right here, pretty much over the onboard audio chipset. This is a strictly cosmetic piece I'm adding because I just felt the board needed just a little balance. This spot just seemed distractingly, well, bare. The other piece I added to the motherboard is the second M.2 heat spreader. I'm not sure if I like this as much as I thought I would. Now, the metalwork came out great. It's just as you'll see shortly when the GPU is installed, there's just a lot of brushed aluminum in the same area. I may paint it white, not sure yet, but let's move on. The next simple mod was the 2.5 inch SSD. And after I painted it, I replaced the stock sticker here with a custom decal. I got a pack of these clear full eight and a half by 11 inkjet labels and I can print basically anything I want. I'll leave a link to these in the description below. Next is the memory and you already saw this, but here it is put back together. I think this is the best mod I did this week. It just came out flawless and looks like it was purchased this way. Maybe G-Skill will put out a version like this. Who knows? Also, before I forget, earlier when I stripped these heat spreaders, I was wearing my gloves and goggles, but what I wasn't wearing was my respirator. When you strip aluminum with sodium hydroxide, you definitely should wear a respirator. One of the chemical cartridge types I'm missing the cartridges for mine, and I meant to mention that I should be wearing one during that segment, but I forgot. I'll be sure to throw up a don't be stupid like me warning at that part during edit. Okay, finally, the RTX 2080 Ti. Not only has it been cleaned, repasted, repadded, but it also got quite a facelift. Now, the back plate isn't a replacement back plate. It's just a thin aluminum skin over the stock back plate. I did this because EVGA actually uses the back plate as a heat spreader and it's actually engineered pretty well. The back plate itself is machined aluminum with embedded copper plates at the heat pad points. So I decided to keep that while adding a brushed aluminum cosmetic enhancement. Now, if this is something you would consider doing, keep in mind clearance issues that may arise if you have like a large air cooler. The plate I used is only like 0.6 millimeters thick, so it shouldn't be an issue in any system, but definitely not in this one because the first PCI slot is actually the second slot down under the M.2 slot. I also added the decal with the Elevated Systems logo over the RGB bar, but I didn't completely debrand the card. It's still an EVGA card. But this is what I was talking about. When the GPU is mounted 
Next to the new M.2 cover, that's a lot of brushed aluminum. I mean, let me know what you think. Should I paint it white? Now, I have everything modded for this build that needs to be modded. If you're new to the channel or curious about the build, you can check out the earlier videos here or in the description below. And make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss how it all finishes up. I just have a bit more wiring and some custom RGB lighting to do on the modded Lian Lee Lian Cool 2 mesh. And then I still need the fans and power supply, but I hope to have the build complete in the next few weeks. In the meantime, I have a channel first special build that I'm going to test all these parts in, so stay tuned for that. As always guys, be sure to give the video a like, and if you have any questions, ask me in the comments below. I'll be sure to give you an answer. But that's it for this one guys. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.